Songwriters Across Texas has been broadcast regionally for nearly a decade. Let's open the vaults to have a look at one of our favorite segments. Well, I've, I've always considered myself a songwriter. There was never a time when I did, and as far back as I can remember, uh, I've been writing uh, songs, you know, probably since I was seven or eight years old. So there was never really a time uh, when I didn't think of myself as a songwriter. Uh, some of the songs we did tonight, uh, uh, I, I wrote, you know, years and years ago. Coming to Austin, uh, it was like a, a vacation for us because we we're playing five hours a night, five nights a week, and and Austin closed down at midnight in those days. So we would play from 9.30 to 12, you know, two and a half hours. We were used to playing five hours a night. So this was like a piece of cake for us, you know. We came here and it was just really nice. And and part of the thing that, that really got Austin on the map was because it closed down at midnight and uh, all the bands would quit playing at midnight and then sort of go to somebody's house for a party where we would pick, uh, sit around, play guitars or fiddle or whatever and write songs or, or play songs that we'd written. Uh, you know, Daryl Royal was a a person who always had an open invitation for songwriters and pickers to come to his house after midnight when we got through playing Townsend Miller, another guy who would organize these kind of picking sessions. And I think those picking sessions were really at the heart of, uh, of the early days of Austin music in the early 70s. The guy that really inspired me in, in Austin was Kenneth Threadgill. Kenneth Threadgill. When I saw Kenneth Threadgill, I knew that I needed to be in Austin. I said, if this guy can make a living, can with a, have a band in Austin, he had a band called the Velvet Cow Pasture at the time, and they were really, really good. And and I heard him, and I went, shoot, I got to move to Austin. I, I came down here to something called the Dripping Springs Reunion, and uh, I saw Kenneth Threadgill. You know, he said Austin's own Kenneth Threadgill, and I saw that, and it knocked me out. You know, this guy was yodeling and doing Jimmy Rogers, and and he had hippies in his band and everything, and so. Uh, it was just, I thought it was so cool, and I, I, that's exactly when I made plans to move back to Austin. I'd been in Austin already for about six months before, but I said, I'm going, I'm going back to Austin, you know. So much, darling, since you went away Are you the same as you once were So long ago And the West Texas wind just keeps on blowing Honey, where did you go? All the glitter lights on Greenville Street Don't mean that much to me and the man on the radio keeps on playing all the hits off the CMT. It makes me wonder if she'll ever be back, and if she does, will she be the same? But the West Texas wind just it keeps on blowing like the sound of a lonesome train. I miss you so much, darling, since you went away. Are you the same as you once were so long ago? And the West Texas wind just it keeps on blowing, honey. Where did you go? Johnny X! Goes her all over town Was she there all the time And the rodeo and cowboys in Amarillo Have they treated her a little unkind All the urban cowpokes in Pasadena With their smog and mechanical bull But the sound of 
the fiddle just keeps on playing Does she think they're a little too dull? Where did you go? Where did you stay? I miss you so much, darling, since you went away the same as you once were so long ago and the west texas wind just to keeps on blowing honey where did you go and the west texas wind just to keeps on blowing honey where did you go? There was sort of uh, this, the Rolling Stones were doing stuff that had country flavoring to it. Bob Dylan was putting out sort of a country, country-ish album. There was the birds that were dabbling in country music. And so there was this sort of dabbling in country music by, by the hippie population, sort of. And we got in on the early days of that. We were actually the first long-haired country band that I ever saw was the bands that I, that I had. And by the time we came to Austin, we had been doing it already for a couple of years, and 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 it was right. Austin was ripe for the same thing. Armadillo uh, ha did have all kinds of people in the crowd, and you know, and it and it was it was one of the first times it was really diverse. When we did it in Amarillo, we'd have a hippie crowd and we'd have a redneck crowd, and it very often wound up in fights at the you know at the end of the night. In Am in in Austin, it wasn't quite so polarized. Uh, in Amarillo it was extremely polarized, but we were the only western swing band there and some of us had long hair at the time, but the rednecks had to accept us because we were all they had. You know, we had steel and fiddles and played Bob Wills and everything, and so they loved us for that, but they didn't understand the long hairs. And the long hairs started coming and listening to us, and, and it, it created a lot of tension in Amarillo. I would say don't be discouraged, just keep writing because it's it's really hard as far as the business goes, you know, to get songs placed to where they're going to get recorded in the top 40 or something. I mean, that's kind of a closed circle amongst song professional songwriters. And so I would I would suggest that they not get discouraged and just keep keep cranking them out, you know. I mean, that's what it takes. It takes that kind of thing. Even if you have to go on and do something else uh, to make a living, Keep cranking out the songs because there's you never know, uh, you know when uh, when one might catch on. Plus, there's people like me that <clears throat> even though I consider myself a songwriter, I'm always looking for uh, songs, new songs that were written by someone else or just songs that are new. You know, not covers. It uh, doesn't barely matters to me if I wrote it or if somebody else that I know wrote it. What really matters to me is it's not a cover. It hasn't been done before. So uh, putting out original country music is really my, my big thing, and songwriting is a part of that.